so I've definitely been caught in Rogue Corps' hype, to the point where I tried convincing someone unconvincible of its potential. I know the community's initial reaction has been mixed when it comes to this game, but I see this as a perfect opportunity for the devs to revisit tons of ideas that didn't work out for DRG. Also giving DRG's gameplay a roguelite spin just sounds like a great idea to me personally. We could finally get an endless mode that actually works for example. Anyway, enough of my preachy bullshit. Whether you're a hater or not, we will all truly find out if this game is worth it once we actually play it. My main goal will be to try and decipher how the game will work and whatever other stuff I may spot that I find noteworthy. Alright, at the moment we have 9 screenshots, a teaser, a roadmap and random spurts of information to work with. Starting with the teaser, there isn't much to look at besides the spaceship really. The ramrod's design greatly resembles the early space rig in my eyes, especially when you notice that it has practically the same headpiece. Also, the last bit of this teaser bears a striking resemblance to their unreleased trailer. I am curious if they will revisit some pre-alpha lobby designs for Rogue Corps. Now the screenshots. I've given them very rough categories, so please bear with me. Half of the screenshots seem to contain either some structure or a new environment. First, let's hit the structures category. From the first screenshot, we can spot the most obvious thing. That being the new pistol which expertly clips into the dwarf's hand. The other obvious thing are these two yellow cards in front of the dwarf, both of which are next to a lever. The biome that this screenshot takes place in is Radioactive Exclusion Zone. In this screenshot, much more of that same environment is shown. The reason I think it's identical is thanks to this tumorous growth here that's still visible from all the way over here. There's quite a bit to take in for this one. To the left we can see some machine operating on a red rock, which appears to just use the salt pit's texture. To the right we can see the interior of some sort of structure. This appears to be the resupply model. And all the way to the right we can see a Bosco in front of a rough table. At the very top I spot something that isn't normally seen on this biome. Could be some sort of rogue core thing we don't know about yet. Lastly there are green flares littered around the area. I believe that this is either the starting point or an area that dwarves need to reach to descend deeper into the caves. As we know from the roadmap and the devs, each run will feature 5 stages, so it would make sense that that's what this is. As for Bosco's purpose, it's likely a placeholder for some upgrade drone or whatever. Then we have an entirely different structure featured in these two screenshots, which once more I believe are taken from the same cave instance. The screenshots make it blatantly obvious it's magma core. This building is surrounded with a bunch of machinery. We can speculate all day of their purposes. On the active monitor we can indeed see the deep dive icon, assumedly used as a placeholder. As to what's written on the screen, your guess is as good as mine. Some interesting bits I've noticed is this damaged thing coming out of the ground, and what appears to be a rail of some sort in the background. It could just as easily be anything but that. Lastly, an area around the hot rock is covered in ice. Perhaps some sort of an ability that lets you manipulate the environment? I believe this building is part of an unknown objective. And I'd make a wild speculation that this could be a monorail thing. It'll be fun to look back and see how wrong I am. These four screenshots feature one thing that the developers have wanted to do since Project Warka that being structures. The closest thing we have to that in DRG are mineheads and refineries. We saw a bare bones idea of abandoned mines in the pre-alpha. Seems this long time idea is finally being fulfilled in Rogue Core. Next, I'd like to check out this image of the game's upgrades. First, we can see that upgrades have rarities attached to them. Makes me really wonder how they will get players not to fight over the rarest thing on the list. So the five upgrades that are featured here are Sweet Surrender, 25% chance for medium sized or larger enemies to drop plus one red sugar on death. By plus one does it literally mean one health point or a small chunk? Shield Boost, plus 10 max shield. Long range expertise, plus 10% damage with long range weapons. Hopefully, differentiating long range weapons won't be guesswork. CQC Mobility, Killing an enemy with a close range weapon grants a 50% movement speed bonus for 1 second. 
Sounds like that scout upgrade, but exclusive to close range weapons. Necro Reload, killing an enemy grants plus 50% reload speed for 2 seconds. This is also similar to that M1000 upgrade that allows for a near instant reload after a weak point kill. I do have to admit that each option sounds useful in their own right, but the legendary straight up sounds like the best one, and CQC like the worst option. From further analysis, at the bottom left we can see that these abilities can be stacked. The only real question is how many of the icons are placeholders. But judging from the upgrades we have to work with, I'd assume that CQC here grants the movement bonus for 3 seconds instead of 1. The most interesting bit in my opinion is this thing at the bottom center. It states, Bastion, plus 100% damage and plus 50% damage reduction while standing still. This seems to be a suit mod that was mentioned on the store page. It's something you'll be able to customize before starting a run. At the bottom right we see that the dwarves have 3 slots for equipment. In this instance they have the new pistol and the lock 1 equipped. Above the weapons it shows the suit ability, time dilation. Once more your guess is just as good as mine what this does. Probably lets the dwarf dash? No clue. I'm willing to bet that suit abilities will be the equivalent of active perks. The store page states that you will also be equipping these before the mission. With that, I'd like to move on to a different set of screenshots. One that seems to showcase a brand new biome. From this one, we can see a screen popping out of the dwarf's arm, which really just seems like an in-world visualization of when dwarves acquire a new upgrade. Now for the backdrop. There's an entirely new texture utilized for the cave surfaces of this area. There are tons of elongated strips of rocks forming around the area, as well as giant green protrusions, either emerging from the ground or falling down from the ceiling. In the very back, there's a yellow light shined at an entryway. Unsure if it's part of the biome or yet another structure. Could speculate that it leads to the next stage or the finale. We get a better look at these biome features here. The spiky towers seem to be a huge stack of rocks that melded into each other. As for the green glowing things, we can't tell what's their purpose yet. Could simply act as set dressing really. One thought I had is that this could be the new Exponite material. But I don't think that it is. I think Exponite will come in a much more traditional form. Yet another missed opportunity to bring back Quantride. This screenshot here lets us get another look at the region. Here we get to see the textures more prominently, and more of those rock tower formations. Here we can spot that red sugar does indeed still spawn in rogue core. In the back here I believe we see another entryway, and right in front of the dwarf is a yellow flare, as well as their upgrade screen, which inexplicably turned blue. With the green and yellow flares, as well as the screen colors changing, I believe the dwarves may still be color coded in this build of the game it would make the players quick to differentiate when playing with randoms. And lastly, I saved the most intriguing screenshot for last. Once more we can speculate till the cows come home, but this seems to be related to the core in one way or the other. Likely a boss fight. Oh and hey, there's some red sugar there too. I believe that whatever this new biome is will be exclusive to the game's final stages. I may have also already ran into this biome in DRG's files. If I'm correct with my assumption, the biome's internal name is Deep Core, which would further support my speculation. The timeline also syncs up, since it appeared in the game files sometime after Season 3 was released. If you have some doubts about this being a new biome, then lo and behold the store name for these two images. RC underscore biome underscore A. Moving on to the roadmap, there's a ton of information presented here. I assume this was made in an attempt to emphasize their open development. Apparently Rogue Core has already went through free updates. Within the first update the basic mechanics are mentioned, which I'm sure the devs have elaborated a thousand times by now. The 5 stage dives with a boss fight, then using Exponite to upgrade, player loadout unlocks and damage numbers. Wait, we are finally getting official damage numbers? It does make too much sense for a roguelite game. Update 2 claims to have a focus on the co-op mechanics. This is where the no class thing is mentioned. Everyone starting with the bare minimum, a pickaxe and a gun. This one mentions a mid-mission resupply safe house, which could also be what this card thing is from earlier, 
Next one claims that all objectives will be optional for bonus XP. Does this include the final stage's boss fight? Can that be skipped for the sake of survival? Exercising their open development stance, I did ask a developer a bunch of questions, one of which was about the objectives themselves, and how many are reused from DRG. They basically told me that currently it's a mishmash of new prototypes and some old stuff. But they also made a point to say that one of Update 4's purposes is to make all the objectives new, with some carrying similarities to DRG. Next is a cooperative selection of upgrades, weapons, and so on. I think we saw an example of this in one of the screenshots. This implies that you'll be gaining new weapons via this screen. Creating small personal buffs. Fairly self-explanatory. This sounds like a re-implementation of the original Gold Frenzy system to me personally. And then comes Update 3. This is where they created new starter weapons and phase suits. Phase suit either refers to that Bastion thing or the suit ability we saw here. Maybe both. A dev has said that in terms of weapons, currently all DRG weapons are ported over to the game with a small chunk of new reclaimer weapons. The dev also noted that likely not all DRG weapons will survive testing. This includes some reclaimer weapons that are already nearing the cutting room floor. Perhaps one day, we will see what these were. Was also told that adding new weapons to Rogue Corps is going to be a lot easier as they won't have to worry about intricate modification systems and overclocks. Players unlock new reclaimer gear between runs. Basic roguelite stuff. Constructor drone for crafting upgrades out of Exponite. I do have to wonder if the crafting occurs through that Bosco we saw earlier. And after that, they finished up UI and HUD stuff. Now down to update 4. For this, they'll focus on establishing the characters properly. I'm left to wonder if they will all be clones of each other once more or possess different lines. Gameplay experimentation for the final stage. Mission objectives updated to match the game better, as mentioned a bit earlier. Full implementation of the Exponite upgrade stuff, more UI polishes, and designs of brand new enemies will begin. Lastly, just random tidbits of information mixed in with speculation. I believe Rogue Core was originally going to be Season 4. The developers didn't want to extend the same theme for a second season again, but yet, here we are. Whatever the original idea was clearly evolved beyond its update and was developed into a standalone game to break it free from any limitations that DRG would impose onto it. I wasn't able to get any alternative answers as to why the split was necessary, but I have two additional guesses. 1. It would have left some players confused who'd run into this new game mode with a prior knowledge of it. There are already tons of things that happen in the game which can be overbearing. Two is that it would have been a performance headache, especially to merge it now when it's been developed as a separate project. Who knows what crazy stuff would have happened to the base game when all they did was release a hotfix for the Rogue Core game mode. Also, the different balancing this new game mode will require would just create more headaches in the context of the base game. For the game's setting, the developers have stated it'll be a grittier DRG. The dwarves you'll play as will act overall more professional, but they also lightly hinted that it won't be entirely serious. I'm just hoping we won't get repetitive jokes that overstay their welcome. For the voice actors, Javier, who is the voice actor for DRG's Dwarves, will more than likely reprise his role for Rogue Corps. When it comes to mission control, no clue. Robert may reprise his role, or it'll be an entirely new person. Maybe there won't be a need for an announcer whatsoever. Only time will tell. And for the millionth time, Deep Rock Galactic isn't getting abandoned. The devs just want to focus on a new and exciting project. I don't blame them. Quick TLDR of sorts, Rogue Core will consist of 5 stage deep dives, but if each stage was more or less 5 minutes long, each successful run ends in a boss fight. Throughout the dive, the dwarves will run into various upgrades and equipment, ranging from DRG weapons, brand new weapons, and even traversal tools. Perhaps brand new tools, dare I say. All objectives during the runs will be entirely optional, and as dwarves progress through the dive, they will unlock more toys to play with. This game's space rig will be somewhat similar to the one we know of. It'll be much more compact and will allow for dwarves to customize their suit upgrades and pick their starting weapon. Well, I think that about covers what we've got so far. I'll try not to hype the game anymore until I actually get a chance to play it. I'm also going to be doing a community Q&A with a developer. 
So whatever rogue core related questions you have, just ask away in the comments and I'll note them down. And for the time being, I'll see you soon.